Hey everyone and welcome to Screams After Midnight, I'm Peter, that is Tim. We talk about horror movies and in this episode we are going to review and discuss Ouija, Origin of Evil. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will start spoiler free and we will give you warning before we go into the spoiler crypt halfway through, um, somewhere in the middle. Uh, so you can watch a little bit and see if you like the sound of it um, without uh, getting anything major spoiled for you. So. Yeah, let's get into it. So, I think the first thing we have to mention is we watched the first one about a month ago. And we hated it. We despised that film. It was probably the worst film of the year it came out, or if not, close to it. Uh, Yeah, I'd say it's about right. (laughs) Absolute garbage. Gar trash. Mm -hmm. The worst of the worst. Generic Hollywood pap. This one's not that Agreed. Bad. <laughs> yeah. So, Ouija Origin of Evil, of course, uh, is directed by Mike, Mike Flanagan, who directed Hush and also directed Oculus. Now, Oculus is a movie that I liked to set up for, but I thought it fell flat in the last act. You know, the, the ending didn't really, well, give an ending um, <laughs> to the movie. And Hush was a fun movie, I thought. I, I liked Hush quite a bit. Um, I liked Hush. I think that um, it didn't live quite up to its potential, but I do think it's still an enjoyable movie. Uh, Oculus, I feel like that's something I need to watch again, um, especially now knowing a little bit more of uh, Mike Flanagan's work. Um, I, I feel like Oculus I was something I watched on Netflix one day and then might have like been doing other stuff or maybe fell asleep like a little bit towards the end and then had to rewatch it or something. So I, I do kind of want to go back and check that out. Yeah, so that's. So I think. Cool. I, I, sorry, I don't think uh, like Mike Flanagan's like my like favorite director, or that I get super excited uh, when he does a movie now. But I think he's a very promising director, and I think his stuff is at least like at the very least watchable. Oh yeah, I don't like. I I would agree. Promising's the the right word for him. I don't like. He's not blown me away yet. I liked Hush quite a bit, like I said, but yeah. you know. I feel I, like each movie, I. I get a little i like a little bit more or get a little more excited for so with that said (laughs) so he's involved in this so after the absolute trash of the first movie um Mm. this was kind of weird it was like all right well the director's kind of not bad so who knows Mm. what this will end up being like and then the reviews were coming out and they seemed quite positive uh surprisingly so which was really weird because Ouija, the first one did not review well at all. It had like one percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It was like diabolical. And then I kind of wonder, like, did it like make a lot of money or something? Like, what was the point of it continuing made it, it? It made enough. Okay. I've not even checked Tim, but I can just tell you, yeah. it made enough. You know, okay. it's, it's really that simple. Mm. And yeah, this is much better than the first movie. I think that's yes. very easy to say right off the off the bat. Um. It actually has characters that you kind of care about. They have yes. actual personalities. They have stories. Uh, they have connections with each other. And it slowly builds on what the story is. And it even dares to be fun. Uh, yes. Especially early on in the film. There's like fun elements to it. There's some good suspense that does not rely, always rely on jump scares. There's some good scares that happen in complete silence. Which is usually my favourite kind. Because it, yes. it tends to be creepier. Um, I will say this though. I do think it falls apart at the end. Um, yeah, a little bit. Uh, and I can tell you why. I don't even have to go into spoilers to tell you why. This is the great thing about this. I was enjoying this as just as a movie on its own, right? I was into the story, and oh wait, let me, wait. Can I take a, a guess as to what you're gonna say? Sure. Okay, uh, it, it starts off really good, and then at some point you remember that this is a prequel to Ouija. And then it's, that's it, when it kind of... It's on. It's along those lines. It's not so yeah. much that I... I mean, I kind of knew it was. Well, right, right. But it, it's it's not so much that it remembers... Well, it does, but it's that there's a point about 20 minutes before the end where it stops trying to have an ending to its own story and realises... Oh wait, no. We have to set this up so that it ties in with the backstory to that terrible movie that came out two years yeah. ago, and everything it does at the end to tie into that movie. I hated. I hated it with a passion. Yeah. See, like when I say, like obviously going into the movie, like we knew uh, it was like a prequel and everything, but 
like honestly for me i didn't even realize that these were like the same people in the same house until it started getting closer to the end and it's not like i you know was like completely uh ignorant or anything it's just that you get like caught up in their story and stuff in the beginning and like you said they're much more developed interesting characters well, see this is the thing tim i think it's partly what you're saying but i also mm-hmm. think that it's also because the first movie is one of the most forgettable movies i have ever seen <laughs> yes. in my life yes. i see see when uh it was getting towards the point where they were tying it in i was like does this even sync up that well like yeah. i seem to remember this character and that character supposedly just being outright evil and like they, they seem like sympathetic here the whole time like i, I don't know yeah. uh, i don't want to go too much into it we'll save it for actual spoilers cause right. i don't want i don't want to get into the the actual how it connects but it just as soon as it started to connect as soon as it started to force these elements so that it fit with the first movie is when it completely lost me because up until that point i was having fun i thought the scares were good for the most part i thought the characters were all likable uh, had fun with what they were doing and i it, like the setting a lot mm like it, it just gave it like a nice like oh this makes it stand out a little more that it's just a it's kind of like visually interesting and like it it didn't feel like you know uh, it felt kind of like authentic like it didn't feel like you know super forced um like it felt like it it was genuinely existing in that time period yeah i know it did um and joe i love actually this is a detail a few movies have done this now but I really love it when they do it. Is uh, because it's set in the sixties. They use the Universal logo at the start from oh, yeah. <laughs> like the past. They don't use the new fancy one. They use the one that looks old, uh, yeah. and I really like that. I think it's a really great touch. Um, so it, it just it sets you in the mood for it. You're like, oh man, this is yeah. yeah. Now, if I have uh, one major complaint about the movie, uh, which uh, I'm not disagreeing with, you know what you said about it kind of falling apart towards the end, uh, I do agree with that. Um, I wouldn't say that it necessarily made me like hate it at that point or anything, but I do agree it would have been better if it could have stood out on its own thing as its own thing instead of like you know having to tie into this but what actually really kind of bothered me is i didn't like a lot of the cgi in the movie it just kind of like like anytime there was a scene with like you know her and her mouth was like elongated you know uh, like that like those kind of effects and stuff i i, I kind of felt like man i think it would have been just creepier if like you know she was just being like a weird stoic little girl or maybe if they just had like a little bit of practical effects or something just um a, a lot of the cgi stuff kind of bugged me and and that's also kind of a criticism i have of a you know a, a lot of like more modern horror movies and stuff too it, it's not just a problem with this movie but yeah yeah no, i i agree it, it didn't look that great because the, the problem is of course horror is typically a low budget genre so when yeah. they try and use cg they tend to not have the money to really put the put the time into it but it actually makes it convincing yeah, um, and, and, I, and I, I CGI just that. never like it, it. Just never looks like as scary as like you know, and 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 again, it's not like you know, it's like you know, has to super scare you or, or anything. But it just never like looks as creepy or as cool as real life stuff or practical stuff. That's kind of my problem oh. with every single monster in almost all of Guillermo del Toro's movies. To me, <laughs> I disagree with that. Sure. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I think I think some CGI has worked in horror movies, but I think the it works when you can't you don't even realize it's CGI. I bet there's probably examples where I would go, oh that's CGI to me, but oh really? All right, okay, it can work. Like, but you didn't yeah. notice, and that's why it worked. Yeah, I was thinking maybe yeah, yeah, there's probably instances like that, or sometimes you know like they'll use a practical effect, but maybe use some CGI to touch it up like a little yeah. bit or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like obviously, like if you get something like like a hole blown through someone's like stomach or something, you can <laughs> you need to have like CGI to like do it. But, yeah, yeah. You, know, you have the practical edge of the hole though, so that and then the insides, so you, you know, you can do stuff like that. But yeah, um, not that there's a hole through someone's stomach in this movie. Uh, that's just an example. Uh, but no, I liked I liked the uh, I, I thought the the little sister who you know. Uh, She's the one that gets possessed, Doris, or I say possessed. Oh, it's kind of possession. It's well, yeah. whatever. But she, yeah. she's the one that ends up being creepy, and she, like, I actually really like her at the start of the movie. She's, she's, she's a very likable kid, as is her big yeah. sister. And I almost didn't think her big sister would be, because you know, early on in the movie, she's a sort of, she's like a teenage girl. She's sneaking out to hang out with her friends, 
and yeah. you think there's going to be this constant plot throughout the movie of her and her mother like arguing and fighting about generic teenage crap and it doesn't really happen it's all kind of like it's there for like character reasons but it's not like super intrusive and it's not like dragging the movie down like yeah. it's there just the right amount to introduce the elements it needs to introduce um, oh yeah definitely so like I, I don't think there's any point in the movie where I was like, Oh, come on, get on with it, just get to the ghosts or something. Like I was kinda just as invested in their story, you know, as all the you know, weird crazy stuff that's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And I I think them and this is from the trailer of course, I'm not spoiling anything, them kinda of being sham artists to like trick people into thinking they're talking to their deceased loved ones. Um mm-hmm. I think it makes it like an interesting setup because they know all the tricks. So it makes yeah. them question when anything real actually happens, and um, especially the big sister who is really cynical and really doesn't believe in anything, is uh, like pointing it out. But she does care for her sister. She tries to protect her sister when the occasion calls for it. Um, yeah. So no, I, I think the characters are really likable. I think there's some really good scares where there's just something in the background of the scene. I I talk about always loving this when there's just something there and the music doesn't you know go doom to let you know that there's something there. You know, yes. someone will just walk past and you'll see the shadow of the figure or something in the background. Yeah. There's, a, there's a few great moments like that in this. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Um, so, no, so, some. I think it's good stuff. I think when some of the backstory comes in and they explain kind of the history of what's going on, I kind of like that too. It became very pulpy. Yeah. But because the movie wasn't. Like, I don't think the movie's super serious. I feel like because of the way the kids are, because of the. The way the little girl, um, the way Doris talks to things with the board and the way she treats it, there's an element of fun spirited about it. So I didn't mind that the backstory was kind of pulpy and like, you know, uh, goes where it goes. We'll talk about what it actually is in the spoilers. Yeah, I I was fine with it. Um, Yeah, it's... uh, What I kind of like is they, they didn't really like dwell on it like too much uh, like it, i think it was like very matter of fact like you know this is kind of like what's going on you know and but then it didn't really become about the you know that thing you know if that makes sense like it, it didn't become like oh like this is who the spirit is now we got a battle like you know yeah, yeah. or that, that kind of thing it's still very much even though you find out like what the backstory is it was still very much about the the family yeah, although the problem is, is that the ending with the family doesn't make a whole lot of sense because it does have to just tie into that first movie. Blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> God damn it. What what a way to just kind of like... You kind of know going in it has to tie in at the end and you just yeah. you know it's going to probably ruin it and then it does and it's like, oh, I'm upset, <laughs> but I knew it, it was going to do it, but it, it just... Yeah. It would otherwise been a really solid movie and now it's got this big problem at the end. Yeah. Um... So, yeah, I think I think we're good for spoiler free. I think we've we've kind of okay. praised it quite a bit, but with the big caveat, the last fifteen twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah. I I mean I would say if for whatever ungodly reason, if you liked the first one even a little bit, <laughs> definitely go see this one. It's much much better. And um, you know what? I was actually pretty happy. Uh, you know, because for all of October, we've been doing a lot of like older movies and stuff. And I was actually pretty happy to actually have the chance to go to the theater and see a pretty decent horror movie in October. Yeah, well, we can only go do that during October if they release some during October. Exactly. Which exactly. Uh, they didn't this year. They released a lot in September, bizarrely. But um, So, yeah, we're going to go into spoilers. So, full spoilers okay. now in the spoiler crypt for. Ouija, Rise of Evil, or sorry, Origin of Evil, Rise of Evil. Um, <laughs> Which, so, the title is, I thought was kind of weird, but... As, right. It kind of is. Because it makes it seem like, I guess you're being like, oh, the person from the first movie was evil, and this is their origin, okay, whatever, but it makes it sound much more grandiose, like the origin of all evil. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Well, let's get right into that. Let's get, talk about okay. the connection, because I think this is the big thing. Yeah. Um, I don't get that she's evil. Like, I feel like she's only the way she is because she's... Like, the first movie, from what I remember, and I don't remember it well, folks, even though it was only a month ago that I watched it, like, that movie is so goddamn forgettable. But (laughs) I do distinctly remember the big sort of thing, like, towards the end being that, oh, Lin Shea's character's, like, super evil, you know? 
And in this movie, yeah. nothing up until that final scene when she like becomes possessed and kills her mum, there's not a single moment where I think she's anything other than a nice teenage girl who's like trying to save her sister. Oh no, that yeah, without a doubt, no. Not a hint of it. No. <laughs> um so and it, which I, and I guess it, I mean if that's the reason why she's evil because she's actually a demon insider then sure but it didn't feel like the first movie was like saying that it felt like it was just saying she's evil well the first movie um and actually when when I first saw uh the second one I uh, I actually when I left the theater I was in kind of such of a, a good mood I was like oh I I kind of want to watch uh, the first one again now, but then that quickly like dissipated, and I was like, "No, I'll just read the Wikipedia page. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not watching that again." But, but no, it, it did give me like a little bit of like, "Oh, well, like I want to um, revisit the to find out uh, exactly like what happened because I forget all the stuff with um, you know, the sister and everything." But uh, yeah, so I think in the first movie is basically that you know, um, all the teenagers or whatever, why blah, 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 being hunted or stalked by that ghost or whatever. And then they go to like, you know, uh, see Lynn Shay's character who says that their mother, uh, was like abusive and sewed the girl's, uh, mouth shut and that they have to release her, her to, uh, you know, uh, free your spirit or whatever. And then the big twist was that, you know, obviously that wasn't the case that these the all the evil spirits were in the sister, so when they cut her mouth open they all came out and um but what's weird about that is like in this movie it seemed like you know that was the way to stop the evil spirits was by, you know, sewing the mouth shut. But yeah, it, it kinda didn't work because it, it seemed like just the evil spirit just went to the other sister. Yeah, or at least one spirit. <laughs> yeah, at least one did, and even then, yeah. like, e- even if it all fit perfectly, the the, the problem would still be that it just doesn't fit the movie. Like, the yeah. honestly, this movie feels like it should have a a happier ending. It feels like we should see the if the even if the mother dies, that the sisters survive and like take yeah. care of each other or something. Like, it felt like it was building to that kind of ending. It does not feel like it's building to a sad or scary, spooky ending where everything's you know messed up forever. Um, yeah. It just it feels out of place, and the final ten minutes, as soon as that it comes in, oh, you need to sew the mouth shut, kind of thing. I was like, ah, oh, why? What? <laughs> it didn't make sense to me, and everything after that point just didn't click, and it just felt like, oh, these are just random things. Like the movie kind of had rules up until this point, and then all of a sudden, you know, yeah, it's gone. Um, I did like the backstory. I like the idea that this. The reason why this is all here is because technically the house is a graveyard because this evil Nazi doctor uh, used to experiment in people in the basement. Like I actually kind of like that. Yeah. It, it's so it's so ridiculous and pulpy, but I love it. And uh, I did like good like that too because I I didn't see it coming. Like one of the rules uh, that they establish is that you can't play in a graveyard, and then uh, they have all those bones there, and then at, when they kind of discover it, and they're like. Um, they're like we've been playing in a graveyard. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like I didn't like, even though at that point you knew there were like, you know, dead bodies there. I was like, oh, I didn't really put it together that that like au- they are automatically breaking a rule as soon as they're yeah, playing yeah. in the house. That counts just because there's like people buried there. It just counts. Yeah. Um, I don't know if one. I wonder if one person counts though. Like if it's just one body. Is it a graveyard if it's just one? Uh, good point. I don't know. Ah, could but I, I I assume that there's multiple bodies, but we only saw the really that main that one main skull or whatever i always saw several when the uh, priest put his hand in and with it, he had it lit you could see that there was oh. like multiple like torsos and stuff it, it was oh true yeah it was it was obvious there was like at least several so yeah yeah so that, that, that's yeah. fine um <laughs> i i loved when uh when doris is like being really creepy to the uh the boyfriend um yeah he's like do you, want, do you want to know something cool what yeah when you're getting choked to death, this is what it yeah. feels like. And she describes yeah. every part of it in detail. It just looks super creepy. Yeah. Um, and then th- there's like a really good, uh, yeah, like beginning to, uh, I think it was uh, at that point too, when he, uh, when she kind of like first sneaks up on him or whatever. And like, she's like, I forget what she says, but he, he does this like kind of like little like, oh, hey, oh, like he gets like scared mm-hmm. by her. That just, uh, I don't know, it just like w- felt like a really cool, like uh, nice real little moment. Yeah, and I, I was saying how the movie's a lot of fun, and because it was making yeah. me laugh. See, see, early on when uh, the older sister Lena sneaks out to go to her friends, and that's where she plays the the Ouija board for the first time. 
Yeah. I actually, her friend was cracking me up, the scared one, who, oh, yeah. after every single thing that the, the board said, <laughs> she'd go, oh my god. And she'd say yeah. it every time in the exact same way, and it was really cracking me up. And then when like the other girl's mum opened the door, she just started screaming yeah. her head off like ridiculously. Yeah. And it, it, it was really, I was like disappointed we didn't get to see more of her because she was yeah. proper making me laugh with how like over the top scared she was. Yeah. But uh, no, nah, so like yeah, it's, it's good fun. Uh, one of my favorite like creepy moments was uh, after after uh, Doris has been using the board herself. Uh, we see Lena's bed sheets getting pulled away, and she keeps taking yeah. them. And you kind of like expect a certain scare. You, you, your mind's sort of going, "Oh, there's something at the bottom of the bed that she's going to see when she goes over to pick them up, or whatever." Yeah. But it's just such a subtle thing when she goes up, she picks the sheets up, she lies back down. You can see the door, like, like you know, it's sort of behind her, and you just yeah. see this dark figure standing there. No music sting, no loud noise. It's just there. Cut to next scene. Yeah. Simple. Yeah, that effective. That... Yeah, that was really good. I liked that, um, like the the little glimpses we got of the uh, like that shadowy person. Uh, like I like it. I think maybe the, I think the first time uh, when Doris is looking through the planchette and um, you see that thing, but it's just like you know, it's not in focus or anything. It's just like off to the side, mm. and you don't even really notice that at first. And then once you do kind of notice it, it kind of like quickly like scampers away. Well. I would argue you you don't even notice it until it moves. Like that's what makes yeah. cause it's because it's, it's just like the arm just sort of like peeking out and yeah. you know and then it like moves off and you're like oh jeez um, yeah uh, and I I do like that when she has that like pain in the back of her neck and she goes she has the idea to go to the mirror. To oh see. yeah yeah. I was like oh there's going to yeah. be one like holding the back of her neck. Um, yeah. I I was almost disappointed that it went full on like ridiculous CG and like went inside her kind of thing like. That felt a bit over the top, but yeah, it uh, was a little much. <laughs> at, at least the the build up to it was good. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so I like um, some some of my other favorite scenes uh, were with the uh, boyfriend again. Um, there's a uh, the big like um, I I guess maybe you'd say it was a jump scare, but I still liked it when uh, his dead body grabs him from uh, after he's hung. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause oh. he, he's hanging from the middle of the staircase. And yeah. we get this thing where it's like really tense, like uh, both the big sister and the mom are like sort of staring yeah. at Doris, and we see the mom like fly back as if like a ghost hit her. But then we just yeah. see this 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 body still hanging, might I add. So it's almost like a yeah. bungee rope comes in and like grabs her, and it's it's really creepy. Yeah. Now, would you say that was like a jump scare? Because it it does like I feel like people did like jump in the theater, but I feel like it's not like you know it's not the typical kind of thing where someone turns around or something like it doesn't like jump right in front of you in the screen it's kind of like this it, it's it's maybe a little more subtle like it comes in from the side it's not like you know super focused on it and it's also happening while this other thing's happening so it's, it's... it is a jump scare but it's not a yeah. cheap jump scare okay i like that because, yeah, it's, a, it, because it's, it. it's building to it and it jumps but it's not a fake out either it, it like continues on and there's like you know yeah. it's you know so yeah. and then uh another scene i really like uh, with him too that was uh, I, I like I, I thought was really intense was when she takes him to the basement she shows him the hole where the, oh, yeah, uh, they found yeah. the money and uh, she's just like I forget what she says to, but she, you know she wants she wants him to go in uh, for another reason but she's like yeah like just put your hand in and it's just like <laughs> uh, it's just like so dark and uh, it was like a nice tense scene too yeah yeah mm. um yeah, I, I don't really have a whole lot more to add. I, I just, I just want to reiterate yeah. how much of a shame it is that those last like fifteen minutes just kind of, yeah, it kind of ruined the movie for me. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, um, I would say, I didn't like it either, but I don't think I hated it enough to ruin the movie for me. Like, I think I was just like kind of okay with it. Like, I would have liked something better. I would have liked it to just be its own thing and not have to tie in, but. I, I liked it enough up to this point where I guess maybe I gave it a little uh, more leeway or something. Well, with uh, that, I guess that. Well, takes... actually, well, no. Before we do ratings, uh, oh. we should probably maybe just talk real quick because we haven't even mentioned the uh, the priest at all, who, who's a, oh, a pretty true. big character. Yeah. True, true, true. Uh, the priest. You know, I don't really have a whole lot to say. But that's probably why I glossed huh. over him. I don't have a huge amount to say. I, I guess I like that he isn't. 
you know, he he's kind of there, but it it just seems to want it just seems to care about what's going on, but he's not like super like, intrusive or invasive. Well, I I kind of like that uh, about him though. Like, I feel like he wasn't like overpowering. Like, it, it didn't become this like you know the priest is gonna save the day kind of mm. movie. Uh, but I also liked at the same time that he wasn't like, well, I'll see what I can do. I'll call the church. Like, he was still like rearing to you know help him and, and stuff and i actually really liked the um like scene where he's getting the reading and stuff because it seems like he's very like uh well actually maybe i should say i like the scene after he got the reading because you kind of think one thing while he's doing the reading and then when they're talking upstairs and he's like you know like oh no that stuff wasn't true like i was you know you find out he was kind of pulling a, a trick on him i thought that was kind of cool yeah i also like when he gets possessed by the uh the, the mad nazi doctor uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, which unfortunately did not last very long, but I liked it while it did. Yeah, he. Uh, I mean, I, I kind of liked that he was able to fight the thing a, uh, a little bit, but then he also like died like pretty quickly. And yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I thought yeah, it's. I, I guess not a ton to say it about him. But I thought it was worth mentioning. No, no. I, th- I think. Uh, I, I think he was a good character. I, I think he yeah. succeeded in not being just the same as a, a priest in every other movie he had his own little things and he even even the way he kind of joked with the mum and like she hinted that maybe it could be a date and he's like oh maybe in another life and then it, it felt like a mutual respect of like yeah it's not going to happen and, yeah i i really like that scene because yeah i do think like the normal hollywood thing would have been to be like oh these guys are gonna hook up together now and he's gonna be like the new father but yeah i like that it was like a more like subdued like Ah well, it is what it is. Maybe yeah, it's it's more that they're bonding over the fact that they've both lost their their spouses. Yeah, yeah, they they both know what that feels like. Um, (sighs) Yeah, but uh, yeah, so ratings, (laughs) ratings, Timmy. Ah, this one's a little tough uh, because, like you said, a lot of it is good, and then. But then, but then there's I feel there's also just like a few things that were holding it back from being like you know like super excited about it. Um, I was kind of dancing between a six point five and a seven, but you know I'm gonna be pretty generous uh, this Halloween season, and you know, I'll give it a little extra bump because again it was a freaking horror movie that was released in October, and I just I, I just can't get over like why. Uh, they don't release more horror movies in October, but I liked it, and I, I liked it overall. So nice, solid seven. Could have easily been a little higher if um, there was a few things better about it, but it was solid. I had a good time. Had the last 15, 20 minutes been completely different and given me the conclusion to the movie that I thought was more appropriate and felt like it was going there, uh, I might have went as high as something like an eight, maybe a 7.5, something in that yeah. region. Uh, as it is, though, I'm going to settle on a six. I think the last fifteen minutes completely kind of just, just takes points off of it. It's just it's a shame, but it's just kind of the way it is. Um, I think it's very fair. Um, and of course, yeah. like, and fittingly that I've waited till after the ratings uh, to do the post credit scene talk. But, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so at the end of the movie, like, uh, Lena gets taken to the mental ward where she apparently stays until she's like you know in her eighties <laughs> or whatever seventies. And the post credit scene is we see her sitting in a chair and the, the, the time morphs to present day or almost present day. It's like basically this, when we first meet her in the first movie, it's like just before then, like she's told she's got a visitor and Lin Shay turns around. <laughs> um, and like, I like Lin Shay, of course, because I love the Insidious movies and obviously she's yeah. in Friday, the, not Friday, she's in Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, she's the teacher in that movie. But all I could think was, are you seriously putting this in as like I give a toss about that first movie? Are you having the audacity to suggest that I care about your connecting to that crap? Seriously. Yeah, yeah uh, it, it it was very pointless. Um, I, I'm not like it. I guess they could be like, well, it's you know, it's a nod to fans, but who was a fan yeah, of that first movie? Yeah, who who cares about that first movie? They yeah. really would have been better off just not... Like, still set it in 65, sure, but just yeah. not have it be, like, an actual prequel. Just have it be, you know, same franchise, but, that you know, kind of soft reboot or whatever. Yeah. And uh, also, I don't know if you notice it, but if they were going for a big surprise, they totally give it away because in the credits, they they list Lin Shay 
like they list her name yeah which normally i don't even like i don't, I don't even know if i was really planning on staying after the credits but uh i actually saw that in there and i was like wait look she wasn't in this movie i was like i wonder if that was like a deleted scene or oh maybe it's like an, an after credit scene maybe we should like stay <laughs> Yeah. What they should have done is have the credits finish, let let that scene happen, and then just come up yeah. at the end and Lin Shay as, you know. Because yeah. that, that's what yeah. Marvel did with uh, Guardians of the I won't spoil who it was or what character they were playing, yeah. but Guardians of the Galaxy had a character pop in at the end <laughs> in the post credit scene, and then it just gave you the credit at the end yeah. right after it. Um, yeah. And that, that works. I will say this though, I actually did quite like the end credits. Not the, uh, not the titles at the start of it when it was like going around like a Ouija board. I wasn't oh, so keen yeah. on that. But see the actual like, scrolling credits going up? They did this mm-hmm. thing where it was almost like it was on like a crystal ball. And it was oh, sort of, yes. And it was sort of arcing as if it was yeah. like the middle was like, you know, wider. And there was like a slight reflection as if it was glass. It was still black in the background, mm-hmm. but it was just a slight reflective kind of look to it. I actually thought that was yeah. kind of cool. But... Yeah, no, I, I remember that. And uh, yeah, when we were watching, I think we were like, oh, that, that's kind of cool. Yeah, so, I, simple, I guess it's supposed to be like the planchette. Yeah, 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 I think that's what it's meant to be. So a simple little thing, but really effective, surprisingly. Yeah. Uh, admittedly, the ending sucked, so I was already in a bad <laughs> mood. But uh, yeah. no, that was cool. So yeah, that's Ouija, uh, Origin of Evil. Much better on the first one, but fortunately, the first one is actually what kind of kills it at the end, which is a shame. Yeah. Uh, so are, are you... Uh ready if they decide to make a pre-prequel like set in like 1945 oh, with the Nazi doctor. yeah i will t- i will take the nazi doctor movie absolutely yeah. although they can't even call it ouija though because it had nothing to do with the ouija yeah that's true yeah <laughs> unless his experiments kind of involved it but i mean but I will say, if they're not already planning on doing that movie, that we are available to uh, <laughs> write it, <laughs> help write direct that. it, yeah. everything. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, would I be interested in a third movie? You know what? Depending, on who, it just depends who's doing it. I mean, if the right people are yeah. in on it, um, I just hope that whoever it would be would get away from just just be fresh, start fresh. Yeah. Keep away from the the story of the first two, even though this one up until the end was good. It's like what killed it was connecting to that first movie. So just start start clean slate, Ouija board, characters get do something stupid, take it from there. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Um, but yeah, that's Ouija Origin of Evil. Let us know what you thought of the movie in the comments below. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. It helps us out a lot. Thank you very much for watching. Check out our friends over at Ronan's Reviews. They also gave this movie a review. Um, <laughs> and of course their score uh, for the first movie was a bit higher than we gave so mm. you know uh, worth checking out uh, for a different perspective of course it's all written reviews uh, that's what they do over there but there'll be a link in the description so do that uh, but otherwise guys thanks very much for watching uh, keep tuned for more weekly episodes of Screams After Midnight now that Halloween is gone and or almost gone by the time this goes up Halloween won't quite have happened yet but Mm. Uh, back to weekly episodes here so uh, look forward to those so thank you very much for watching guys keep watching scary movies we'll see you next time